I want to take a look at the Stanley number 78. They call it a duplex rabbit plane. Uh, it's because it cuts rabbits. That word rabbit's kind of interesting. They say it comes from a French word, rabat, R-A-B-B-A-T, which means to hold down, beat down, recess. And uh, that's really what a rabbit is. It's a recess in the edge of a piece of wood. Uh, in England, they would use the word rebate. You may also hear these called philister planes. Philister planes generally have uh, more to do with cutting the recess in a window sash for the glass to fit into. But philister planes work very much like these in that they have a depth stop and a fence. It's called a duplex plane because you can take the blade off that rear area and put it in the front and it'll act and work quite a bit like a bullnose plane. They're also kind of handy in that they are so square-sided, they're perfectly 90 degrees, that you can also, in a pinch, use them like a shoulder plane. The plane is really very simple, uh, maybe six or eight parts here. The unique part of the Stanley 78 is the idea of both the fence and the depth stop. And I'll look at that a little closer here. Here is uh, just a little bit of a close-up of how the blade adjustment works. The, on these later planes, I say later, this is a 1940-something plane, you see this lever they've added to where if you move the lever, the bl blade moves forward and backwards. It allows you to adjust the blade super simply. The important part of these I think when you're using them is to keep the edge of the blade flush with the edge of the plane body. On the other side of the plane you see the depth stop and it simply rides on a little groove there. You can see I'm just moving it up and down. And then that little three-sided thing below there is the spur. And the way the spur works is you can leave it like that, turned in to where it's not in effect, or you can remove that thing. And you can see this one, even though it's from the 1940s, only one of these three spurs has ever even been sharpened. You put it back in that spot with the spur sticking out. And what this allows you to do is when you're cutting a rabbit in end grain, it allows the spur to cut the ends of those grains so they don't give tear out. You can see it's just sticking proud of the base of the plane. And uh, it really does work. I cut a, an end grain rabbit here, I'll show you in a moment, uh, with using the spur, and it works like a million. To me, the most important thing about these when you're sharpening them is that the blade is 90 degrees with the body of the plane. So I make sure when I put it on, for instance, on this Tormek where I'm just trying to grind the bevel a little bit nicer, I make really, really sure that I've got it at 90 degrees with the world so that as I'm forming that bevel, it's 90 degrees. I also make sure when I put it in this little guide, I put my square up against it to make sure it's 90 degrees when I'm honing in the micro bevel in the blade. 90 degrees really matters to give you a nice level flat rabbit. So I usually take that for a little while on the bevel, then pull, turn it over, smooth it out to get rid of the, the burr that might have been created, and it's kind of ready to go. The way these work, they just work really, really well. For instance, I'm going to do a little 3 8 by 3 8 rabbit. I set my square at 3 8 and then I can just simply hold it up against the base of the plane here first and then just slide the fence up against my square. My square is set at 3 8 it's pressed against the side of the plane. If I tighten that down I'm going to get a 3 8 of an inch wide rabbit. Then I move the square to the bottom of the plane, press the depth stop up against the square, and tighten that. Now I'm going to get a 3 8 inch width rabbit and a 3 8 inch deep 
rabbet. I kind of make sure that my blade is square with the edge of the plane, and then I went over to a piece of wood just to knock out a quick rabbet just to show you how sweet these planes work. Again, it's 3 8 by 3 8 I'm taking a couple passes here just to make sure I'm, look at that, it's just a perfect ribbon of wood that it's pulled off of there. There's nothing like a sharp blade. Uh, I, I will admit this was straight grained wood, so it was not uh, stubborn at all, but it just takes a great ribbon of wood off of there, perfectly square with the world, perfectly three eighths of an inch wide. And I just take a few passes and uh, you'll see here in a minute, it will, I'll speed this thing up. And you'll see that I get a perfect 3 8 by 3 8 rabbit in the edge of this piece of wood really quickly. Admittedly, yes, you could get a rabbiting bit in your router and probably do this in a half a minute. But very noisy, lots of mess. And this is, I think, super satisfying to do it by hand with a sharp tool and get a rabbit in a piece of wood that is uh, something that you did with your hands. I, I measure it three eighths three wide eight. and three eighths deep. Very reliable, wide. super nice, super quiet, super easy to do. Here's when I did an end grain, literal end grain, and it cut very well using that spur. Here's another great use for it. The other day I wanted to rip some aluminum extrusion. It was 16th inch by one half inch bar that I wanted to be able to rip down the middle into two 3 16th inch pieces. Again, this rabbit plane came in so handy, I was able to just set the bar on the base of the plane, adjust the fence for a half an inch, then set the bar on the side of the plane, adjust the depth stop for a sixteenth of an inch, and I was able to cut a rabbit in this block of wood that the piece of aluminum would sit in perfectly flush. I could tape it down. It held super tight. There was no chattering. Because I covered the whole piece of aluminum with tape, I got perfect cuts, deadly accurate, no aluminum shavings flying around the room. And uh, again, super accurate cuts because the groove I was able to cut in the piece of wood matched the piece of aluminum exactly. The Stanley 78 duplex rabbit plane. You got to get one of these. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe.